Good morning from the Eternal City. Hello, I am actually in Rome and I got up early this morning to go take some sunrise photos over the Roman Forum. So I uh, just got on Google and put like quick uh, best sunrise photo locations in Rome and you come up to the top of, uh, uh, this is called um, Campidoglio uh, Piazza and there's a fountain right behind me and so you come up climb up these steps here you'll walk off to your right and right through that little archway if you can see that there there's a tiny little archway and it goes down and there is a fantastic view of the uh, roman forum all right so early morning in rome over the forum just sun just came up and look at that there you go the early bird gets the worm. Got the Colosseum back there. Overlooking the ancient forum. I've shown you a lot of Roman ruins. Now I'm actually in Rome. So we are in Rome for just a real short, quick 48 hours. We came in yesterday. Um, we flew in from Istanbul and at the airport, we hopped on the train and went to the um, main train station. From the, the, the airport to get on the train, it's super easy. There are signs that uh, direct you right to the, uh, the trains and you get there. And so when you first get there, the, the first ticket machines for the trains, uh, just walk past those because there's gonna be a ton of people there and you'll be in line forever if you try to buy your train tickets there. So do not do that and so just walk past that and then when you get to the actual train station there'll be more machines and there'll actually be some counters that you can buy your train tickets so buy them there it'll save you some time and then get your tickets and you have to scan your ticket to actually get onto the train to get through the turnstile and once you do that do not throw your ticket away which I thought about doing because I scanned it went through the turnstile got on the train I'm like well I already validated my ticket and it got me through the turnstile so now I'm good but they actually come through and check um, so I guess people jump the turnstile so don't throw it away keep keep it and then it took us about 30 minutes to get to the main train station the uh, Termini station in Rome and from there we walked to our um, hotel which was about I don't know 15 minutes I guess not too far away so great place to stay right there's a lot of places around the train station and then here to this um, lookout point it took us about I don't know 25 minutes 20 minutes to walk here nice walk early in the morning not many people are up most people are still sleeping hello good morning from the Trevi Fountain and it's about not quite seven o'clock in the morning we walked over here from our sunrise photo spot hoping we'd get here before the crowds get here and you can see that is not the case People are here lined up taking pictures in this very beautiful, very popular spot in Rome. Supposedly, if you throw a coin over your shoulder, it guarantees your return trip to Rome. Um, so, so much has changed since the first time I visited, visited Rome about 25 years ago. And there's a lot more tourists here, a lot more crowds. And uh, it's just not as easy uh, getting to things. Uh, for example, um, you have to book... Um, to go to the Colosseum, book that in advance, all the museums. Back in the day, you just walked up, paid your money and went in, and it was very easy and pretty cheap back then too. So things are a lot more expensive now, um, but I guess that's travel. So let's see what we could do in Rome for 48 hours without buying a lot of entry fees to stuff, because to be quite honest, most things are already booked up anyway. So if we wanted to, to get into some place, uh, we might not be able to get in. So. We just left Trevi Fountain and now we're walking to the Pantheon. All right, so we are in the Saint Ignatius Loyola Church here in Rome as we continue our tour of Rome. And I wanna show you this fresco on the ceiling. It is so impressive. It's one of the largest frescoes in the world and it's the, I believe it's called the Passion of the glory of St. Ignatius and uh, it was painted in the 1600s and it is the colors are so vivid it looks like it's 3d 
and they depict four continents the continent of Europe Africa Asia and America the only four continents I don't know if that's the only four they knew about at the time but uh, anyway take a look at this this is truly truly spectacular it's one of the largest frescoes in the world So it doesn't cost anything to get in here. We just popped in, looked around, and uh, it's very impressive. So when you're in Rome, make sure you stop by the St. Ignatius Church. All right, so I've got a Euro. We're in the St. Ignatius Church. Beautiful church here in Rome. And I guess if you put a Euro in here, it's gonna light up the dome up there. So I haven't seen it done since we've been here. So I'm gonna try it. Let's see what happens. Dun, 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 dun. Lit up that one. It lit up the model. I don't think it lit that up, did it? It did light up a little bit. It's hard to tell the difference, really, but it's a, it, it did light. So this is the St. Ignatius Loyola Church. We showed you the inside, this is the outside, and if you're walking between the Trevi Fountain and the Pantheon, you will likely walk right past this. So make sure you pop inside and take a look. It is truly beautiful, very beautiful inside, quite stunning. And uh, yeah, it doesn't cost anything, just go in there and walk around, and we wound up spending probably 15, 20 minutes inside. It's so beautiful. All right, here we are at the uh, Pantheon, one of the most historic buildings in the history of the world. It was uh, originally built in BC, and uh, the original building burnt down. This one was built, uh, dedicated around 106 AD, and Pantheon, so it was built to the all of the Roman gods, dedicated to all the gods uh, that the Romans believed in before they converted to Christianity and then they converted to Christianity and since around 600, 609 AD it's been a uh, Catholic church and so just truly spectacular building now to go inside and we I talked earlier about how things have changed in Rome from 25 years ago earlier you could just walk inside and uh, there were no lines you didn't have to buy a ticket now there are lines and you have to buy reservations had to buy tickets and it costs 15 euro per person to go inside if it's not completely booked up so uh yeah so times change you know i guess uh if you want to travel you have to deal with it right so yeah so truly spectacular building the pantheon here in rome and the stroll between here and the trevi fountain is really fascinating so just a great great uh uh, introduction and uh, you get a vibe of the city of Rome here at the Pantheon. All right, welcome to the Piazza Navona, one of the most beautiful squares in all of Rome. Pretty fantastic. Behind me, we've got the, um, the fountain of Neptune. And up in front of me, we've got the fountain of the Four Rivers, one of the most famous fountains, statues in the world. It's absolutely spectacular. Here we are at the Spanish Steps, if you can see them back behind me. So, um, you know, one of those places that you need to see when you're in uh, <clears throat> in Rome, one of those must-see places. And these have been um, these have been popular since they were built over 300 years ago. And artists come here, and it's I mean, they're beautiful, right? They've got this nice fountain here, 
a nice piazza. So artists have been been coming here, and then so they why well, they got quite famous. And one of those things you can come to in Rome that's free. Obviously, very busy now, so it's a good thing we're here in the low season. I can't imagine what it must be like in the high season, but um, anyway, Spanish step. Alright, so if you're walking around and you're up by the Spanish steps, you get hungry, come here and get a super Italian sandwich. They are outstanding. Look at that ham hanging up there. And they have beer, they have apple spritz, they have, of course, soda, water. But their sandwiches are phenomenal. Come by here and get one. Check it out. All right, so what do you do when you're in Rome for less than 48 hours? And it's kind of a side note on your trip. You had, uh, you fly into the Rome airport and you know, if you're moving on along your way to Southern Italy, which is your goal, but uh, if you fly into the Roman airport, you almost have to spend at least a couple of days in Rome. So that's what we did. And uh, we haven't really planned for this trip. So we haven't made reservations or anything like that to most of the blockbuster sites. But then you visit some of the, uh, uh, still very beautiful but maybe lesser known sites such as this church I'm about to take you into the Santa Maria della Vittorio and uh, inside this church it's it's a real I wouldn't say hidden gem because there's people here but it's not nearly as busy as most of the other sites in Rome but inside there is a sculpture by uh, Bernini that is absolutely um, phenomenal the uh, ecstasy of uh, Santa Teresa and um, yeah, I'm gonna take you in there and, and show you around, but the, the ceilings the, um, uh, are just phenomenal. The artwork, I mean, stat the statues are, that's, that's one um, sculpture, the one I just mentioned by Bernini, but uh, there are others that are just absolutely spectacular. So uh, it's near the uh, uh, Tamini train station, so uh, the church of uh, Santa Maria Vittorio. You have to check it out when you're in Rome, when you've uh, visited all the other blockbuster sites. So Check Angels and Demons was a Dan Brown novel based here, uh, or that wasn't based here, but that, uh, that mentions uh, this church. Uh, and uh, it was later released as the movie with Tom Hanks being the star and uh, the Bernini sculpture played a key role in that book and movie. So let's go check it out. All right, so there you have it, the Church of Santa Maria della Vittoria. Welcome to Rome. Look at that, oh man. Mm. Oh, these pizzas look so delicious. For photographers, Ponte Umberto is one of the best spots in Rome for capturing the golden hour. This iconic bridge connects the historic center with the Vatican, offering unparalleled views of the Tiber River and St. Peter's Basilica. Pro tip, arrive at least 30 minutes before sunset to secure a good spot and set up your gear. As night falls and the city lights start to twinkle, Ponte Umberto takes on a different kind of magic. It's a reminder of the timeless beauty of Rome and the simple joys of life. All right, we're back at um, 
Piazza Navona. And uh, I think I told you the, the wrong fountain earlier. So this behind me is actually uh, the fountain of Neptune. And you can see it's at nighttime. I think it's a little prettier, a little, a little nicer. And behind me where that obelisk is, that's the um, fountain of the four rivers. And the four rivers are, I believe they're supposed to be the Danube, um, the Gan Ganges, the De La Plata, and the Nile. So a funny story is, is that this fountain sculpted by Bernini and that particular character is supposed to be the river De La Plata from South America. And the guy's falling back like he just saw something that scared him to death. And what he's looking at is behind me is a church that was designed by Bernini's rival. So supposedly Bernini made that guy and he's looking at the church made by his rival and it's so ugly that he's falling back in terror. So I am on a tour of Rome with, I tried to be on a tour of Rome less than 20, less than 48 hours without hitting many of the, the major sites, going to most of the kind of the unknown, lesser known sites. But of course you can't be in Rome without coming by to see the Colosseum and what I even like more, probably more impressively, the Arch of Constantine. I mean, everyone knows the history of this place, you know, the gladiator fights and all that type of thing, the mock um, Navy battles when they used to flood it, flood it and then uh, of course they had the trap doors in the bottom to bring the animals, the lions and whatever tigers up to fight the, the gladiators. So, so much history here and then of course this thing, the Arch of Constantine, in honor of Emperor Constantine who converted the Roman Empire to Christianity and then after it became Christian, that became a church and no more gladiator duel, duels, no more bloodshed. Then they had more uh, competitive uh, events to, uh, to uh, entertain the people without death and bloodshed. So right here, so much history. The eternal city of Rome, I tell you, it's one of those places that everybody needs to visit at least once in their lifetime. So much history here, you can't walk around without stepping on something that's probably a thousand, two thousand years old. morning here I am back at the Trevi Fountain the next day I'm here I got here just a few minutes before sunrise so I got here about 5 10 uh, or 5 50 rather by 10 till 6 so now it's 6 o'clock in the morning and you can see there's already quite a few people here so Trevi Fountain one of the most scenic one of the most beautiful places in Rome but you're probably never really going to have it all to yourself but uh, it's still uh, a beautiful place and you can come in and find um, find a nice spot to take a photo and most people are moving around so you can uh, you can come in and you know grab a place for a you know a minute or so and then move out and let the next person come along so very beautiful Trevi Fountain hey when you're in Rome especially if it's your first time one of those places you have to come visit Okay, so now I walked over from um, the Trevi Fountain to the Piazza di Spagna with the famous Spanish steps behind me. And it's about, uh, it's, it's less than, I don't know, less than half a mile, between, somewhere between a quarter of a mile and a half a mile between the two locations. And you could see yesterday afternoon we were here and there were about, I don't know, if there were, it seemed like there were 10,000 people here. I don't know uh, actually how many there were, but you couldn't hardly uh, step anywhere. But here, I'm, I'm here, at, it's like 6.35 and relatively quiet, uh, much, much uh, quieter than uh, um, the Trevi Fountain would. Okay, so now I came up to the top of the Spanish Steps and there's a nice panoramic view up here. Beautiful Rome off in the distance. Got the fountain down there. Wow, 
What an incredible whirlwind tour of Rome. In less than 48 hours, we've managed to explore some of the city's most iconic sites, all without needing advance tickets. From the breathtaking views at the Spanish Steps to the historical wonders of the Pantheon, it's amazing how much you can see in such a short time. We hope you enjoyed this quick tour and found some inspiration for your own trip to Rome. Remember, you don't always need a lot of time or advance tickets to have an unforgettable adventure. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe to our channel for more travel tips and guides. Thanks for joining us on this journey. Safe travels, and be sure to turn in next Sunday as our adventure continues in the beautiful Puglia region of Italy. Arrivederci!